In this video, we'll discuss machine learning and cybersecurity applications. This video was brought to you by the National Cybersecurity Training and Education Center out of Whatcom Community College. Insight Center in this material is based upon work supported by the National Science Foundation. My name is Philip Kreger. I am a professor of cybersecurity at MB Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach, Florida, and also a co-PI of Insight. So what we'll cover today includes a quick review of the previous video, as some of the topics probably wouldn't make sense if you didn't understand a little bit of the content of the previous video, the need for AI in cybersecurity, potential uses of AI in cybersecurity, how machine learning works, an example of machine learning for identifying malware, and finally, potential issues with AI. So there are a lot of definitions of AI, but I particularly liked this definition. AI refers to a system, machine, or algorithm that is capable of observing its environment, learning, and based upon the insights and experience gained, take actions or propose decisions. Now let's take out the first few words of that sentence, and now let's replace it with a human. A human is capable of observing its environment, learning and based on the insights and experience gained, take actions or propose decisions. So the ultimate goal of AI is to have machines that can actually function just as humans function. However, that's proven to be a very difficult task. But there are many AI applications. And so there's a distinction between strong AI and weak AI. Strong AI, or artificial general intelligence, focuses on creating intelligent machines that can successfully perform any intellectual tasks that a human can, such as the ability to generalize knowledge from one domain to another, the ability to make plans based on knowledge and experience, and the ability to adapt to the environment as changes occur. Well, as it turns out, that's a very difficult task, so we really aren't quite there yet with a lot of applications that fall into the category of strong AI. And weak AI is pretty much anything that isn't strong AI. And therefore, most applications you hear and read about today are probably going to be considered in the weak AI category, but there's nothing wrong with that. We also discussed the fact that AI is a very broad subject matter that includes lots of different types of knowledge representation and learning and algorithms. And you see some of those on the screen right there. And all of these aren't particularly unique. Some of these actually overlap. But what we're going to concentrate on are the types of applications you're most likely to see today. And that includes machine learning applications. Machine learning is defined as a branch of AI that focuses on the use of data and algorithms to imitate the way that humans learn, gradually improving its accuracy, which is a very broad definition. But let's look at some examples. For instance, if we think of the human brain, we have experiences, whether they're physical experiences or cognitive experiences. And every time we have that experience, our brain changes its neural pathways, which results in knowledge. Now, every time we have a new experience, whether it's the same or similar to previous experiences, the same things happen. Current neural pathways that have learned from previous experience are strengthened or new pathways are built. This leads to new knowledge. And that's because humans adapt to their environment through learning via experiences. Now let's look at machine learning algorithms. So we have these machine learning algorithms with various parameters that have not learned yet. We then supply something called big data to these algorithms. And essentially, big data are just training cases. It's essentially the same as experiences in the human mind. And as we apply these training cases, which could be thousands or tens of thousands or millions or even billions of cases, the machine learning algorithms create new knowledge based on what it's seen. And the more data you feed the machine learning algorithms, you have improved knowledge or new knowledge. A strength of machine learning is the ability to gain knowledge from usually a high dimension and complex data set. And that's something that humans usually can't do easily or very quickly. Now let's look at the need for AI in cybersecurity. As we've discussed in many previous videos, the more we become reliant on information communication technologies, that is computers, networks, chips, and data, the more problems there are going to be for various reasons. But recent studies have shown that 80% of companies in the US experienced an increase in cyber attacks in 2020. Ransomware attacks rose 148% in 2020. If you want to know more about ransomware, please see my video on ransomware. Monetary losses are projected to hit $6 trillion by 2021. That's this year. And that's going to be an annual loss. And finally, cloud-based attacks rose 630% between January and April of 2020. Now, several studies have been done that looked at how much businesses are using AI and how much they will be using AI in the future. 
The study was broken down by the type of industry, including utilities, insurance, automotive, retail, and so on, all the way down to consumer products and telecom. And the question was whether organizations are counting on AI to help identify threats and thwart attacks. And as you see, overall, 69% of the organizations that were surveyed said we will not be able to respond to cyber attacks without artificial intelligence including a low of utilities with 59% up to a high with telecom of 80%. But clearly this suggests that AI is going to be very important in terms of improving cybersecurity for all sectors in the future. This is looking at the current use of AI in organizations. This is the same study of 850 executives. 75% of organizations use AI in their network security, 71% in data security, all the way down to 59% in cloud security, and 53% in Internet of Things security. So already we see artificial intelligence is used widely in industry. Now the following slide is very interesting because it shows the average time to identify and contain a breach by the initial attack vector. So if you look on the left, you see the initial attack from compromised credentials, that is stolen username and password, business email compromise, which I've just created a video for that, malicious insider, all the way down to cloud mis misconfiguration. On the right, you see the number of days and the average time to identify and contain a breach. And it's pretty incredible because it takes 341 days, almost a year, when credentials are compromised to identify that breach and correct it. And if you look all the way down that list, there's no type of breach that takes less than 220 days to identify and correct it. Another part of the IBM study looked at the average time to identify and contain a data breach according to the year. So we see that in 2021, it took 287 days to identify and contain a breach. We moved down to 2020, 2019, all the way down to 2015. You notice that there was no real reduction in the amount of time it takes to identify and contain a data breach. 287 days in 2021, 280 days in 2020, all the way down to 275 days in 2015. You would think as we are improving our cybersecurity that these numbers would actually be going down. So as the number of cyber attacks increase, advanced and automated methods for detecting, identifying, protecting, responding, and recovering will be crucial. The whole point behind artificial intelligence is to automate everything so that it really takes the human out of the equation for the most part. But essentially, if we take those numbers we saw before, we apply AI methods to the problems. The point is, is to get those the average time to identify and contain a breach down to something that looks much more reasonable as you see on the screen there. Now let's look at applications of machine learning in cybersecurity. So this is the NIST framework. The National Institute of Standards and Technology developed the framework with the active participation of industry, academia, and multiple levels of government. It's designed to be a common language that spans the entirety of cybersecurity risk management and that can be easily understood by people with all levels of cybersecurity expertise. The five functions you see on the screen comprise the core of the framework. Identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. Under these overarching functions, the framework provides a catalog of cybersecurity outcomes based on existing standards, guidelines, and practices that organizations can customize to better manage and reduce their cybersecurity risk. Let's see how artificial intelligence applies to the NIST framework. So if we look at uses of AI, and in particular machine learning in cybersecurity, we can see that machine learning can help identify new network vulnerabilities and threats. AI systems can predict how and where you are most likely to be compromised so that you can plan and allocate resources towards the most vulnerable areas. It can help with the immediate detection at the start of attacks. AI can respond to these attacks in real time as we've discussed because all of these methods are automated. It's a machine, a computer, and an algorithm is actually making the decisions. AI can help build an understanding of website traffic and distinguish, that is identify, between good bots, for example, search engine crawlers, bad bots, and humans. AI can be used for proactive threat hunting or in reactive incident investigation, that is, after the fact. And finally, AI can identify, respond to, and protect against anomalous behaviors for endpoint protection. For example, AI-driven malware detection or network anomaly detection. Now let's look at an example of how machine learning can be used in malware detection. So currently, malware protection uses various methods to identify existing malware. 
For example, with hashes, and if you don't know what hashes is, it's simply a digital fingerprint of a file that's based upon the contents of the file, or specific segments of internal code. And finally, the behavioral characteristics when it's running. All of these methods can be used to identify whether a file is malware or not. However, these methods provide little protection from zero-day attacks. What is a zero-day attack? Well, a zero-day attack means that the attack or code has never been seen before in the wild, that is, out in the public. So the things we discussed before, such as hashes, the internal code, or the behavior may never have been observed previously. And therefore, existing forms of malware protection are less likely to identify those types of files as malware because they're zero days. So if you're unaware of how big, the, how big a problem malware is, let's take a look at some of these examples. The AV Test Institute found that there are now more than 1 billion malware programs in the wild. Second, 560,000 new pieces of malware are detected every day. Now it's very difficult or even impossible for current methods to keep up with all the new malware that is coming out every day and that's where machine learning comes into play. And before we go any further, let's look at that last point. Current methods may deem a file safe when it's actually malware, an error that is called a false negative. Let's take a look at what that means. So here we have a table and on the left you see we have the word actual and then we have malware and not malware. So some files are going to be malware and of course there most files are not malware up at the top in the columns you see there's the predicted whether a file is malware or not what we would like to do is to look at those four cells and see what that would mean for a malware detection program to determine whether a file is malware or not and whether it's correct or not first let's look at the top left cell if the file is actually malware and it's predicted malware that's a true positive so that's a good outcome also if a file is not malware and it's predicted to not be malware, that's called a true negative. That is also a good outcome. And so if we had a million cases and it ran it through some type of malware detection program, hopefully we would see something like this. This would show that 1,000 true positives, malware predicted when it is malware, and the rest being not malware. Now let's look at the other two cells. If a file is actually malware, but the malware detection program predicts that it's not malware, that's called a false negative. If a file that is not malware is predicted to be malware, that's called a false positive. So those two cells, the upper right quadrant and lower left quadrant, are bad outcomes. And so normally we see something like this because malware detection is not 100% foolproof. And by the way, I made up these numbers. But we see in the, in the false positive and the false negative cells is that we do have some poor predictions. For example, if we look at the first row where an actual file is malware but it's predicted to be not malware, that false positive, that is a bad number because that means that that malware has gotten by the malware detection system. And it could be because it's a new variant and the malware detection program was not able to identify it. That happens. So what is the procedure for machine learning to learn which files are malware and which are not? Well, it's pretty much what we've seen before. We have the machine learning algorithms before learning and they have parameters that need to be tuned or changed or modified based upon the data that it sees. And so we have malware training cases. And most times this is just the code that is presented to the malware learning algorithms. This is just data or the files that are presented to the machine learning algorithms. So machine learning training cases may include the file's code, executable or otherwise, and whether or not it is malware or not. That final set needs to be known, whether it's malware or not. And so the machine learning algorithm is presented with 1 million malware training cases, some of which are malware and some of which are not. And the machine learning algorithm is trained to identify the relationships between the code and the prediction, whether it's malware or not. And therefore, after the machine learning algorithm has been trained, each new file is presented to the ma machine learning algorithm and that's when the machine learning algorithm can assess whether a file is malware or not. Machine learning can learn complex relationships between training cases and outcomes. Machine learning algorithms apply to new cases, that is new files, that then, then automatically and quickly distinguish the good from the bad. Machine learning algorithms may be able to identify new, that is zero day, malware based upon what it has learned from analyzing thousands or millions of files. The application of machine learning in real time is automatic and very fast. It doesn't require human intervention. 
Now let's look at some potential problems or issues with artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence isn't a panacea. Anytime you have something new, there's going to be glitches or there's going to be some learning involved. The first problem is that AI requires knowledgeable workers to build the AI correctly. That is, you need to have somebody who's very well versed in artificial intelligence so when the machine learning algorithms are built and the training case is selected and run through the algorithms that it's done correctly. Otherwise, you have the old saying, garbage in, garbage out. AI requires big data sets of training cases. So if you're talking about using 10 or 20 cases, the machine learning algorithm is not going to be robust. It needs a lot of training cases so it can learn the intricacies of the complex relationships between the data in the data set. AI requires a lot of processing power, training and running real time which means you're going to have to have specialized computers on which to do this. If you're doing this in a large application or in a large business that's seeing millions of files per day. AI algorithms must be protected from interference, compromise, or misuse. That is, there are ethical issues and interference from malign actors. That is, you want to make sure one of your insiders doesn't try to compromise the system. AI doesn't replace competent cybersecurity personnel. AI is a tool in the toolbox. There's always going to be need for competent cybersecurity personnel. And even better, if you could have somebody that's cross-trained with AI and cybersecurity, that's probably the best use case imagined. And finally, malign actors can use AI against its adversaries. Who are their adversaries? Well, they're us, the good people. So what if malign actors have access to AI? Now, I'm not going to go too deeply in this, but recently there's been a number of different publications that have discussed this. This is one in ZDNet, but it looks at advanced applications that are growing in use. For example, AI, quantum computing, and 5G wireless that could make criminals more dangerous than ever warn police. That is, the malign actors are taking these new technologies and turning them against us. And I suggest if you want to read a very good publication about this, if you look for Do Criminals Dream of Electric Sheep? This goes into detail about how technology shapes the future of crime and law enforcement and how these new technologies can be used by malign actors against their adversaries. To summarize, we did a very quick review of the previous video. We talked about the need for AI in cybersecurity. We discussed some uses of AI in cybersecurity. And then we looked more deeply at how machine learning works and we applied that to how you would identify malware. And finally, we looked at some potential issues with AI. This video was brought to you by the National Cybersecurity Training and Education Center out of Whatcom Community College.